Hi dear students, here Professor Anil Darekar, teacher of engineering chemistry subject from Dhole Patil College of Engineering. Today we are going to study liquid fuel from engineering chemistry. Almost all engines run on liquid fuel. Means here liquid fuel is used as a source of energy in almost all engines. Now here we will see primary source of liquid fuel. So primary source of liquid fuel is a petroleum or crude oil as petroleum or crude oil occur in earth crust. So petroleum is a fossil fuel. Petroleum word is derived from combination of two Greek words. One is a petra and second Greek word oleum. Petra means rock, oleum means oil. So it is also called as a rock oil. Uh, as far as color is concerned, it is a dark greenish brown viscous liquid. And this liquid always associated with natural gas in earth crust. Now we will see uh, composition of petroleum. So petroleum contains open chain alkanes means paraffin. Open chain alkanes like it's straight chain alkanes, branched chain alkanes. Second cycloalkanes. Cycloalkanes like a cyclopentane, cyclohexane. Then it also contain aromatic compound like a benzene, naphthalene. It also contain resin, resin that is a polymeric compound present in it. Then last one present in petroleum that is of spaltins that is a poly condensed aromatic solids. This poly condensed aromatic solids present as a colloidal dispersion. Now here as petroleum is occur in earth crust so need to do purification. Purification that is a called as a refining. So refining of petroleum. So first we will see definition. The process by which or you can say the method by which Petroleum is made free from impurities means we are separating impurities from petroleum. We are making it free from impurities and separated into various useful fractions. After removing impurities, what we are doing? We are simply separating various useful fractions from one another. Now we will see uh, steps under refining. So refining consists of first one removal of water. So removal of water by Cottrell's process. Now what is the Cottrell's process? In Cottrell process, crude oil is passed between two highly charged electrodes. At the surface of electrodes, small water molecules, droplets combine together to produce bigger water droplets and then that water droplets we can remove easily from crude oil. As initially water in the form of small droplets completely miscible. But after passing between two electrodes, water will separate from crude oil that is in the form of two, two layers. One layer is a crude oil and second layer is water and that one we can separate easily. Second one, removal of sulphur. Now how to remove sulphur? Simply add copper oxide. Added copper oxide react with sulphur present in petroleum. It will produce copper sulphide as a precipitate and we can remove that precipitate by filtration. Now after these two steps we have to do final step that is a fractional distillation called as a fractionation. Now what is the principle behind a fractional distillation? Fractional distillation the vapors of higher boiling point compounds first get condensed condensing into liquid and are collected from lower portion of fractionating column and then lower boiling point compounds get condensed. So please try to understand during fractional distillation first who getting condensed? The vapors whose boiling point is a high that one getting condensed first and that we are collecting from lower portion and then later on lower boiling point compound get condensed. Now we will see construction and working of fractional distillation. So let us see. So this is the diagrammatic presentation of fractionating tower or column. Now first we will see construction. You can see this is a tall cylindrical tower. This is a tall cylindrical tower or column. Now what present inside this tall cylindrical column? Inside the tall cylindrical tower, number of horizontal trays are there. Number of horizontal trays are there. Stainless steel trays. Each tray 
provided with chimney with loose cap means each tray one chimney is there and chimney covered with loose cap now why cap is loose because through this chimney vapor will come outside through the chimney and it go up and there is a furnace at the bottom so this is a construction of fractionating tower now we will see working how it work so here we are taking a crude oil now this crude oil is free from water and sulfur free from water and sulfur that crude oil we are taking in furnace temperature of furnace is 400 degree celsius temperature so at 400 degree celsius temperature crude oil that is a liquid convert into vapors so please try to understand in furnace liquid convert into vapors and that vapors come outside and here unvaporized form of crude oil left behind unvaporized form left behind at the bottom that is called as a residue while remaining vapors go up in fractionating column through chimney and as per their boiling point they get condensed as i said in principle at the lower portion higher boiling point compounds get condensed and at upper portion that is the top portion lower boiling point compounds condensed so simply you keep in mind higher boiling point required less time so it get condensed at the bottom while lower boiling point compounds lower boiling point upper portion and required more time so it get condensed at the top while higher boiling point compound get condensed at the bottom some vapors not getting condensed because boiling point is very very less so it not getting condensed so that one get collected as it is that is called as uncondensed gases second one petroleum ether you can see temperature range then petrol then naphtha then kerosene then diesel then heavy oil you can check here the boiling point of this fraction if boiling point is low boiling point is low means what liquid convert into vapor fastly liquid convert into vapor fastly but vapor to liquid required more time so because of that reason it get condensed at the top means at upper portion while the fractions whose boiling point is very high this liquid or fuel whose boiling point is very high means that liquid required liquid required more time to convert liquid into vapor more time more time to convert liquid into vapor so for backward backward means from vapor to liquid required less time required less temperature so it get get so it get condensed at the bottom so here you can check out composition from uncondensed gases up to residue here c1 to c4 that is methane to butane present in uncondensed gases while up to residue if you go you can check out hydrocarbon number increases from top to bottom right the way boiling point increases from top to bottom now here uses of this uncondensed gases uncondensed gases is used Uh, for cooking purpose that is in the form of a lpg this uncondensed gases on compression and cooling it convert into lpg petroleum ether used as a solvent and used as a fuel petrol used in a petrol vehicle as a fuel or as solvent naphtha is used as a solvent kerosene kerosene is used in jet engine kerosene used for domestic purpose diesel is used in diesel engine heavy oil heavy oil used for lubrication purpose as a lubricant and this residue is used uh, in the form of tar to construct road it is also used uh, for water proofing purpose it is also used uh, in making uh, wax grease etc so in this way uh, we studied uh, fractional distillation so simple concept you keep in mind higher boiling point compound condense at the bottom and lower boiling point compound condense at the top high low portion low boiling point upper portion okay so thank you for watching and being with me thank you